Hey guys, it's Hague here, and uh, tonight is uh, Thursday night, and um, I've been requested to make a very long video for people here on YouTube. A lot of people have been requesting me to make this video for a very, very long time on how to remove malware using a bootable anti-malware CD, and uh, I've been uh, putting this video off for a very long time, but tonight I really, 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 really want to get a get some time here and make a very long video on how to remove malware using a bootable anti-malware CD and what I've done tonight is I've set up a virtual machine here that I heavily infected with malware and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Kaspersky's rescue uh, disk to uh, repair this heavily infected computer and um, I'm going to show you how to create a Kaspersky's rescue disk yourself and I'm also going to show you how you guys can uh, um, boot the system up using that rescue disk and remove malware off a heavily infected computer so uh, I'm going to take this video and uh, go really slow here on my instructions because I'm making this for the users that don't know much about computers for those advanced users you're probably you may want to watch if you if you already know how to do this uh, don't watch because uh, there's still a lot of people here that don't know how to create a bootable anti-malware CD nor do they know how to boot their computer up off a CD nor do they know how to uh, get a hold of a free copy of Kaspersky's rescue disk and uh, for those users that are out there that are so infected that they can't even use the computer and uh, this video is for you. This will give you a chance at uh, removing malware. When you're using a bootable anti-malware disk, all the malware on your computer is basically helpless in defending itself. Uh, thankfully, because we'll be booting off the CD instead of the hard drive. So any virus or any spyware or any malware that's in your system you're not, is not going to have a chance to uh, protect itself from being removed. It's going to... it will likely take uh, care of it so um, you can see here on my virtual computer we have all kinds of fake security clients again um, this one is very these are very old uh, rogue programs but they're here telling us you know that we're infected and in order to remove it they want us to to uh, purchase the full version of the program to try to scam us here we've got a lot of these running you can see the pop-ups are all over the place saying we've got all kinds of trojans and stuff these are all fake but uh yeah, they're trying to harass me to buy fake security here. And um, we also got a script locker on this computer, so all my files and folders have been inscripted. So uh, if I take a look at my pictures, and um, I try to get that open. Security, heard of. Move that aside, you could see here that the pictures that I have are all put into this white file because they've been scripted and I can't even open them because the malware on here script the lockers and scripted all my files all right so that's all right but uh another thing this in with this computer is you will notice here that the start menu you don't have a restart option anymore so whatever malware is on here has actually changed either some registry keys or it may have changed some policies or it may have damaged some operating system files we're done or uh Blocked or change some services or any kind of uh, stuff with the registry so I no longer have that restart button on my computer <laughs> which is funny another thing this uh, computer has is that if you, when I click computer here I can no longer see the C drive anymore you can see here that the C drive is having this window is in my way here let's see if I can move it the C drive is no longer there so uh, if I go into view show hidden files and folders uh, I have show hidden files and folders checked but you can no longer see the hard drive on the computer the C drive is not there anymore because whatever malware is on here has done something with the registry editor or it must have uh, configured some policies and changed uh, some settings so I can't see it and uh, that will worry about in another video so anyhow you can see that this computer is very, very heavily infected. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and show you guys how you can create yourself, you know, your own bootable anti-malware disk. All right, and uh, how to configure Kaspersky's Rescue CD yourself, and I'll also show you guys how to uh, 
boot the system off and use it and re remove the malware on your computer. So, uh, you guys are going to need a second computer to do this off of. We're going to have to have, so if you don't have like a second computer, say you don't have another computer, you're going to have to maybe go over to a friend's house and uh, get and do this and uh, create yourself a CD up, okay? So, uh, you can get a free copy of Kaspersky's Rescue CD off their website and it's very easy to do. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get onto another computer, right? And you're going to go and start doing a Google search for uh, Kaspersky's Rescue CD. I've already got it right here. We're going to what we're going to be downloading is something called an ISO file, which we can burn to a DVD. Okay. So um, when you're on another computer, you want to open up a browser. And um, again, I'm probably making this video for. Uh, those users that don't know much about computers and uh, it might take a long time so I might be explaining slow so when you open up a browser um, you want to go actually before I show you that for those users that don't know what you need you need to get a blank DVD RW to create and burn the ISO file onto that I'll explain later so uh, in order to create the bootable CD you need a blank DVD all right and you need a computer that's able to burn DVDs obviously so uh, when you open up your browser I'm just going to do a search here to show you uh, what these DVDs look like for those that don't they're called so many things DVD RWs uh, DVD R but uh, I'm just going to do a Google search to show you what these DVDs look like you can purchase these DVDs at a local shop computer shop you can probably get a package of these type of DVDs and um, once you have some of those you're ready to download Kaspersky's rescue disk and configure it and I'll show you what you have to do so uh, once you have those DVDs uh, we're going to head over to uh, Kaspersky's website and uh, we'll download a copy of Kaspersky's rescue disk so uh, just do a search for Kaspersky's rescue uh, disk and you'll see here it's up on the top here Kaspersky's rescue disk 10 and uh, the f this is a product from Kaspersky's that's uh, free for download. So when you download this, it's going to be free. You don't have to pay you anything. What you want to do is hit the download link here. Now I'll have the link for this rescue disk in my description box. So uh, download it and we'll save it to wherever you like. So just save it to maybe your desktop really. I've already got, um, you can see here I've got the ISO file already on here so I don't need it. So once the ISO file is on your desktop, you'll see it here. Now it may not have these bookmark icons. I'm actually using a RAR extractor, so the icon may be different, but you'll see Kaspersky's.iso. So if you right click on it, you go into properties, you'll see it will be a .iso, Kaspersky's underscore rescue 10 ISO. All right, so once you have that file, you're all set to burn it to a DVD. So what you want to do is you want to download the software after this called image burn so we can burn the file to the DVD uh, image burn is a program that will allow you to burn an ISO file to a blank DVD so what you would do at this point is put the blank DVD inside the computer and when it's inside the computer you will see the blank DVD if you click on your start menu maybe file explore and if you come up to this PC, in here you'll see your DVD that you have inserted in the computer. I've called this, I've already right clicked on mine and I've already renamed it and stuff to a rescue disk. So you, you don't have to name it anything if you, unless you want to, but once you have the DVD inserted into the system, you're good to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to download a copy of uh, Image Burn because Image Burn is what we'll be using here to burn the .iso file onto the DVD. So uh, to get image burn just open up a browser and go and we'll go and download it. So I uh, just write image burn and uh, we'll download it off their official website here and uh, we'll scroll down here to where it says click here to download. Now I will have the link for image burn on the description box all right. So we'll click on Matrix Creek's website and we'll download our copy of ImageBurn and install it. So I've already obviously got this installed on the system. So when you open up ImageBurn, once you've installed it, it's really easy to use. And uh, 
what you want to do is when you open up image burn is you want to click write image file to disk when you do that you're going to click under once you do that you'll click source and uh, when you click source you're going to locate this .iso file the Kaspersky's rescue ISO file Sele have that selected make sure your DVD drive selected and then right here you will uh, be able to click uh, write to DVD and that will write the ISO file to the DVD now I've already done this and it's already grayed out for me so I can actually go ahead and rewrite the file to this DVD because I've already done it but for you guys you will be able to click this right here and that will go ahead and that will copy the ISO file over to the DVD once that is done you will be ready to boot the system up off the uh, uh, off the rescue disk that's infected so uh, sorry you'll be able to uh, boot up the infected computer using the CD that you just created so uh, once you have that CD created you're good to go repairing the infected computer alright so we'll go back to our virtual machine here and we can see if we go back to our old, you know our malware here and um, the way you boot off a DVD this is where it's a bit tricky for some users um, every computer is going to be different when you first boot your computer up you'll have a very very short amount of time to hit the required key to get into your BIOS or to your uh, or whatever it may be to uh, be able to boot from a DVD we probably have to change our boot priority to do this so I'm gonna try to do this right here and show you guys I made I may fail at some of these attempts because I'm on a virtual machine but it will be relatively the same method if you don't know how to boot off a DVD you can check your manufacturer site or you can Google search how to boot off a DVD I've made a video in the description box that clearly shows um, people you know how to boot off a DVD so check that video out if you can't do that but what you want to primarily do is you want to completely power off the computer so we'll power off the computer and when it's completely powered off you want to start hitting the F2 key for most users I think the key to enter the BIOS is F2 so uh, I think that's what you guys want to do when you first start your computer up like from the moment you power on the system hit F2 now it may be a different key if you're on a different if you're on a Dow or HP but I think for most users it will be F2 so I'm going to power on this computer and I'm going to immediately jam the F2 key here as fast as I can Sometimes it's escape though. So I'm just going to keep hitting F2. And you can see here I got Windows Recovery coming up. So uh, from, I'm just, or if it starts to load into Windows again, you want to restart because we've missed our opportunity. So as soon as it says it's starting to load back into Windows, we're going to. Uh, restart the system and we're going to again we're going to start mashing the F2 key as fast as we can you can see here it takes it could take some attempts to do it and it didn't work again it may be escape so you may want to I'll try this again with uh, escape this time restart It's, it's escape for me to change to my CD I think ah, it's not cooperating right now you can see here it's very frustrating to do you have to know what the key is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, restart it one more time And a log back into Windows here. As you can see here, this takes some tries. F2, as soon as you start the computer up. If you do it right, you'll be able to get. to your BIOS or. being a nuisance here I'm gonna pause the video you'll get the point you have to hit the right key to get to your BIOS
Sorry guys, that took a long time. I had to change some settings on my virtual computer so I can get the BIOS to come up. So yeah, to boot off a DVD, I, I paused the video for like a good 30 minutes. Now I've unpaused it. Okay, to boot off a DVD once it's inserted, you just simply power on the computer. And you start mashing the F2 key here. I, and you'll see, you'll see the key, it will come up. For me it's F2 to enter the BIOS. Alright. I'm just going to keep mashing that F2 to enter setup. So here's what the BIOS looks like. This is what I was trying to get the whole time. I had to change some settings. That's why I paused the video. And um, you come down into boot. So that, well, using the arrow keys, you want to go over to boot. Now the BIOS layout is going to be different between what computer you guys are going to be using. So uh, make sure it's whatever computer you guys are using. You may have to change it in a different way. But you can also look under advanced. Look for something called... Uh, Uh, enable F12 boot menu or enable boot menu or something in that nature but uh, I don't have that on my I do have that on mine I just don't know where the, where the feature is to turn it off and on but if you can see that you can also enable enable boot menu from CD but uh, if that if it's not the case go into the boot section here and use it and you can see here I have to use the uh, the N may move removable devices and hard drive disks are recoverable. And D to remove a device that is not installed. So it's telling me the keyboard used to configure devices and stuff. And then down below it tells me that I have to, to uh, change these uh, up and down. It says that uh, To select it, I think I have to hit enter or something. Change the values, plus and minus. You can see here, you just have to move the CD up to the top. So yeah, for me it's plus and minus. And it's going to be different for everyone. You just have to read. So once you have your CD-ROM drive at the very top, you can exit the BIOS. And um, when you exit the BIOS, it will exit, save, and changes. Okay? Push enter. And with the boot CD in it will automatically boot to the rescue disk so uh, right now I'm just uh, waiting for this to uh, you know to load back into Windows wait the rescue disk so uh, for me if I push escape actually I'll get a boot menu so some people may not get this but uh, you'll get a boot menu where you can select you know between hard drive removable devices and uh, CD-ROM drive you want to if you've already configured your BIOS to go to the CD drive, you're good, Chip. So I'm just going to select CD-ROM. And now we're booted into our Kaspersky's rescue disk here, all right? It's really that simple. Once you're on here, you just have to hit Enter. And you will select your language using the arrows on your keyboard. Uh, we'll, it, and it says I have to press 1 to accept the agreement. So we'll just press 1 here. And now we'll have the uh, uh, rescue disk opened and uh, we're going to go to Kaspersky's rescue disk graphical mode and we'll press enter and um, we're now we're just loading up uh, the Kaspersky's rescue disk and this is where we're going to get in and remove all the malware that's on the computer so now we're not booting into the hard drive of the computer we're booting off off the rescue disk that we created so that means we can go in and all that malware now that's on the system is going to be helpless to defend itself so uh, it won't be able to uh, do anything because now we're not booted into the infected operating system anymore and you'll see here we kind of have our own little virtual environment here of uh, like it's got, you got your, your your start menu and all that, which is nice. So uh, I'm just going to click continue here, and uh, we're just going to let it melt discs. And uh, this is how you use the Kaspersky's rescue disk. It's going to be really easy to use actually once you get used to it. It's nothing really special actually. Um, we're just going to let this load. You can actually minimize this if you want, because I mean you're in your own little bootable environment with this rescue disk. So, what you want to do is you want to hit Kaspersky's rescue disk and open it up. Just double click that. Maybe triple click it. Get it to open. All right. 
here we go. Oh, I, I don't want to open the registry editor. Just exit that. Um, all right. So once you open up the rescue disk icon, you'll get this. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you first update your uh, your uh, virus definitions. You can see here if you click update, it's never been updated yet. You want to update that so any malware that is present will be able to, so we'll have the most accurate scan you know so uh, we'll just go ahead here and let our Kaspersky's rescue disk update so it's going to go ahead and start downloading from the, the internet now if if this rescue disk works perfectly you may if it finds your network adapter and it it may or may not sometimes you won't be able to download the update or you will have a network problem because it won't find your network driver or for your network adapter it won't be able to connect the internet in that case but if you just downloaded the rescue disk off your website, chances are you have most of the updates, so don't worry. But uh, go ahead and update it. But if you do have internet access, it's kind of nice because you can uh, open up the browser and you can browse the web if you wanted to. But uh, I'm not really interested in doing that right now. Um, yeah, you can basically use the browser and browse the web if you need some help for virus removal and stuff. But uh, that's not part of this video here. Um, we're just letting this uh, database update so it may take some time here and um, while this is do, do, doing the update you want to go ahead and click settings at the top here and um, you want to change the security level to really high all right and then click apply that way we will have a very strict security level so we'll have the most accurate scan here All right, just going to click OK. So now we have the up. We're, we're we're successfully updated. So it says last update was just completed, and now we're ready to scan the computer for all the and get rid of all that malware that we had. So uh, what we're going to do is click the uh, objects scanned, and in here we're going to select the C drive. All right. Once you select the C drive, just click Start Scan, and uh, it's going to go in and it's going to go and start searching the the hard drive for all that malware that um is on the system and it will start to detect all the stuff so just this scan will probably take um, I don't know 15 minutes maybe 30 minutes depending on your computer it may take a couple of hours uh, so be prepared this scan probably will take a long time to do but uh, as you can see here we're scanning our computer now and all of that malware that we saw at the beginning of the video has no chance to run while we're doing this because we're not booting into the hard drive. Now at the very bottom corner we can already see that uh, Kaspersky's rescue disk is already detecting malware and you can see at the bottom right corner that, that, that it's found a Trojan already and it's continuing to find all kinds of stuff that on the computer. So uh, you'll see these little notifications here and it's going to say postponed removal and and that means that you can't remove the file until the scan's complete so you have to wait for the scan basically to complete so you can see down here we're getting a notification it's found a trojan and it's found an, there it's found antivirus best and it's found another trojan so right now it's going to work here and it's finding all kinds of malware that's on the computer and uh all this malware we couldn't remove on the uh computer being booted into the normal environment so we'll just let it do its thing here so like I said, I said this scan's probably going to take a long time so you can see malware removal takes you know your time that's what uh That's what you have to do when you're removing malware is you're sacrificing your time basically. And we get we could see here again we're getting more infections. It's just finding all kinds of infections. And you see it says postpone to removal. Now while the scan's running, if you ever want to, you can click view details. And uh, and it, when you do that, you can see all the stuff that is detected here. So so far we can see here that it's detected all kinds of stuff, Trojan fake AV. We, as you've seen when, in the beginning of the video, all those fake antivirus clients that we had installed on the computer, it's detecting. And um, 
Ran we got Trojan Ransomware, there's this Crypto Walker, it's finding, and uh, you can see here it's just populating a list of all kinds of malware. This computer was it's so badly infected, we're probably going to find several infections here. It's just going to keep going on and on and on. And you have, if you move over here, you'll see the actual path to the file, right? You can expand the path, you know. So it gives you an idea exactly where the file is on your hard drive, right? So it's in C application data, Roman, and there's the executable file for it. And uh, the common thing with most malware these days is application data and Roman or application local temp or anything in app data is normally where malware hides. So if anything that's in the app data folder, you can see here, that's where all the malware gets installed to. So keep that in mind. That's the directory that all these viruses normally get installed to. So as you can see here, we're just going on and on and on about how many Trojans it's finding and how much uh, infections. It's just continuing to find all kinds of malware. So uh, we'll just keep letting it run. And um, again, it's, this scan is probably going to take 30 minutes to complete. So we'll just exit this for now. And uh, we'll continue to let it run. And it's continuing to detect malware. Found antivirus 2010.exe. So it's going ahead. It's just taking out all the malware right now. Look at that. It's continuing to find it. This uh, rescue disk, Kaspersky's rescue, just just wrecks the malware that's on your computer. It's all those ma malware infections that we saw at the beginning of the video. All those fake antivirus clients. They're just sitting ducks right now. We are just absolutely destroying them with this piece of software here, this boot disk, and. Uh, once we get into uh, the scans done, we can remove all those, all right? Because all those threats that we've seen in the uh, report log, we'll be able to, re we can remove once the scan's complete. So uh, we're just going to let this scan complete at 16%. So this may take a very long time to uh, be very, very patient and let it complete while I pause the video.